Good morning, Colton. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Leora? Nice to meet you. I'm very well. Nice to meet you. So I want to tell you that your exceptional performance is Conrad Roy. It's such a beautiful tribute to his memory. So tell me about the process about playing him. Yeah, I mean, it was, um, as you could probably already imagine, it was a pretty profound experience getting to know him. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it left an a imprint on me that I, I still can't quite um, shake off. I still feel really kind of emotional about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't really have a lot of words besides it was just, it was quite a privilege to, to get to know him beyond, I think, what a lot of people might have already known. Yeah, yeah. So you had to capture him for a number of years. You had to capture his highs, his lows, of course, his physical transformation, really the sadness and loneliness that took over him that you can see in your physical, your physicality and your performance. So what sort of conversations did you have with Liz Hanna and Patrick O'Manis, the co-showrunners, about him? Well, it's funny you say it because my where immediately my brain goes is actually um, is the opposite. It was, that 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 portion of it, the sort of the part that a lot of us already know, you know, yeah. we in the court of public opinion and, and quite literally the courts, the way we've heard about this boy is is mainly through the lens of his darkness, his heaviness, right. the things that he's quote unquote struggling or dealing with. And um, I feel like that story has unfortunately already been told by a lot of other people. And Liz and Patrick, of course, were so wonderful and so supportive, but they also really encouraged me in my, my sort of own personal quest, which was that I felt like if there was one person on set who needed to champion this boy's lightness and his heart and the fact that um, he just, you know, had needed the grace to just also be a boy. I mean, we had eight episodes, eight hours to to meet him and watch him and remind people that he lived a very, very much a full life that included a lot of, a lot of things like a lot of boyhood, just first romances, first heartbreaks, first all those things that are, we all can experience. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. So actually when you say that, my mind immediately goes towards actually the thing I'm most proud of, especially with Liz and Patrick and how he created it was the space we all, thought he deserved to have of just being a boy I mean, just being accurately like the boy he was. Yeah. So were you familiar with the case before you signed on? I mean, peripherally, I, I joke about this a lot, but um, so Coco and I are the same, we were born the same year, graduated high school the same year. So around the yeah. same age. And so when all this happened, um, I was, I was also 18 and yeah. like a lot of 18 year olds, I, I'm a news junkie now, but I wasn't so much. Then. And, um, right. and so I knew about it, but the more interesting thing to me nowadays is how many other people are still so interested by it. Like I got to know it, of mm -hmm. course, very intimately through the show, but this is the first project I've ever done where every person I meet, my, my friends, my family, my my family's neighbors, you know, community members, anyone that I come up to and I go, well, I'm actually doing this thing. I'm, it's it's going to come out soon on Hulu. And it's about that, the girl and, and you know, the text. Oh my God. Oh, and then <laughs> it's like this immediate, really emotional response out of people, which I've never had with any other project. And I think it just, I, I think it's, it honestly, put the wind beneath my wings to remember like, okay, well, there's a reason why we're doing this because people don't feel resolved. Yeah. People still have a lot of feelings about this because I don't think personally that one, that we've answered the questions we, we want to answer, but also more importantly, that we ask the right question, which is, yeah. I think the show does a really, really good job of asking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree. So <laughs> I'm going to geek out a little as someone who loved your work on Little Voice. And then, oh of course, God. dear Evan Hansen, I miss Little Voice, can I just say? Um, obviously, your work on stage, of course. I love the Can't Fight This Feeling scene. Can I just say, <laughs> what was it like filming that with Elle Fanning? 
Well, I'll tell you first off when I when I read that part of the script. See, you got to Matt. You you know a little bit more about me, it seems, but um, I I'm definitely a musician as well. And this was the first project I've received where I was like, oh my god, they actually want me to just talk. Like they they want me for me, man. I was so like, <laughs> I was so <laughs> jazzed. And then I got to episode four, and I went, god damn it. Oh my god, I can't escape it. Um, <laughs> which I'm I'm joking because I mean it was actually. Honestly, this was a, of course, you can tell like a very moving and profound shoot. That day was probably the most, even though it might have been actually the least calm for anyone else, it was the most calm day for me. Cause I was like, you know what? This is my, this is my bag, man. This is like, I, I wanted to be on Glee when I was a kid. Like, come on. I, I, I knew exactly that you have to grab your stomach at the right time when you're, when you're feeling, you're know, giggling and singing at the same time. You know, I just, I knew. Yeah knew what I needed to do that day. Um, and so it was really, I mean, actually that was probably one of the most fun days we had. Cause as you can imagine, a lot of days were not. Um, yeah, of course. Fun. But that day in particular, I remember Elle walking out in the, in the sort of Leah Michelle outfit, the Rachel Berry outfit. And I just like lost it. I was like, wow, <laughs> we're really going to go there. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> I loved her work in teen spirit too. So I love to see that she could sing again. She can sing all the time. Yeah, so. she does. Yeah. And I also loved your baseball diamond scene with her. It just right. brings a lot of levity to it. And then of course your intimate text messages with her, how it portrays it like cinematically. It was just so beautiful. Um, so what were some of your favorite moments to shoot? I think that baseball diamond one is, is a good example because in going back to the sort of that lightness, I feel like yeah. it was such a, a lovely moment to, to escape sort of what we already, our preconceived notions of these two people. Yeah. I think that's subconsciously why that scene feels so lovely. Yeah. Because it's imaginative and flirty and fun and like, and those are all words we don't associate with, with this case or with those two young people. And I feel like it just further complicates the story you already know. Yeah. Not to mention it was just lovely to do. I mean, we was right in the middle of the shoot and Elle and I are good friends. And we just had a, well, actually this is a, a, I know we probably have to go, but here's a quick fun tangent. That day was right before Halloween. And um, I surprised Elle by coming on to set. She did not know this. But I came as um, I came as Catherine the Great. Um, so that day, oh a lot of the live, I, I don't want to say that that helped a lot of the live. But I came on with my little plush bear and a pink dress and I my blush and I said huzzah all day long. And then we <laughs> ran around a baseball diamond and we just had a lot of fun. And I think the show and the story deserved that. And yeah, I think it paid off, like you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And I know at South by Southwest, you said you had seen the whole show. So I'm curious as a viewer, what scene stood out for you? Oh, really? Oh, mm. good question. Well, one in particular, I didn't get to see, but I was there that day. And then I saw it and it really, it really hurt me was um, there's a scene later when my mother played extraordinarily by Chloe Sevigny is she's watching this video confessional that um, Coco made. It's a real thing that he, that he did and it's yeah. one of the few pieces we have. And they included some stuff in there that I just didn't expect. And all of it, uh, not to toot Chloe's horn, but it's all in real time. She's actually watching the moments that, that you hear the audio from. And it's actually her um, just beautifully performing and it was hard. It was hard to watch that. I mean, it was, it was already a vulnerable thing I was sharing. And then to add to that, it being received, this vulner vulnerability was, I was, I was watching my, my like simulated mother receive it so warmly and so fully to be seen in that way. It was, it was something I was really unexpected, you know? Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Well, thank you so, so much for your art, Colton. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to see what you do next. Hopefully a character that survives this time. I'm, I'm <laughs> making a point of it. Don't worry. 
Amazing. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Laura, thank you.